Well, hello, 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 everybody. It's Angie the Coder, and today I'm happy to announce that we are starting a new series all about basically EM coding in the hospital setting, inpatient and observation EM coding. Now, I will tell you, this is going to be a multi-video series because I can't cover this all in one video or you guys would like, it'd be a snooze fest. You guys would be sleeping. So I'd like to break it up into separate videos. Um, my plan is to break it up into the first video. The one today will be basically an introduction and an overview and we'll jump into the history. Then we'll do another video on the examination and we'll do a video on medical decision making. Then we'll do a video on putting it all together. And, um, you know, may, there may be a few more videos, but those are the main videos I do plan on doing. So this video was requested by uh, some of the people that watch my videos, some of the viewers. Thank you so very much. And it was also, a, uh, I also had a uh, couple of people in my Etsy shop request that I do inpatient e &M coding tools like I have the outpatient ones on my Etsy shop where they want to know if I could create an inpatient one and I was already working on that so I thought hey what I'll do is I'll finish that up put it on the Etsy shop and then I'll do this video that'll go along with it so whether you use my tool or not I'll show you other tools you can use um, whether you use my tool or not no problem but just know that the series will also have a tool that goes along with it and I will do a video showing you how to use the tool that I create as well so uh, thank you to those of you that commented that you would like to know more about this topic. So without further ado, let's hop in and we're just going to start right with an overview of e &M services in the inpatient setting. As usual, um, those of you that have seen any of my videos know that if there's any source information or source material that I'm going to link it in the description below the video. But we are going to go out right now so I can show you where to find the source material. And before we do that, I do want to say for coding in the hospital setting, you use either the 1995 CMS Evaluation and Management Guidelines or you use the 1997. We are going to focus on the 1995 guidelines because they are the easiest to learn, is my opinion. And um, they're more universal for all specialties, so whether you're a hospitalist or a cardiologist, these guidelines will work for you. And also because compliant for CMS allows um, you to use either guideline, whichever one's most advantageous to the provider. So let me go out to the internet. We're gonna go Google this and I'm gonna show you guys how you can find this information yourself. But keep in mind that I do have the link in the description below for you. All right, once you're out on Google, what you'll do is you'll type in um, like I already did here, 1995 EM guidelines and add CMS to the end of it. Anyway, so when you get to your search, it just should be the first one. Make sure it says that it is CMS.gov and click on that one. And this is the document. Now, if you don't already have a copy of these guidelines, I recommend you stop the video right now, pull them up and either save them to your computer or print them out so that you can refer to them as we go through this um, series of videos. So that's how to find them. All right, now that we've discussed where the source material is, and I will show you as the series goes, I'll show you some other places to find that information, but that is the most direct way to get there. Now that we've done that, we're going to talk about the three key components of these E&M services. And these three key components are history, exam, and medical decision making. And you do have some other um, elements as well, components like the component of time and counseling, and we can we're going to discuss that, but we're going to start with the three key components: history, exam, and medical decision making. All right, history is the first element, and it consists of the chief complaint, or CC as we call it sometimes, or you might see it in the medical record. And the CC is just a brief, concise statement of why the patient is being seen. So for instance, if you were being admitted because you had severe abdominal pain, abdominal pain would be your chief complaint. So the provider might document something like this, chief complaint, abdominal pain. <laughs> so I do want you to notice the chief complaint is 
or as I typed here, chief complaint. <laughs> There's a typo already. <laughs> anyway, the chief complaint is required for all of the levels that I'm going to go over with you today. So the uh, second element is the history of present illness, or what we like to refer to as HPI. Now, HPI is basically the chronological development of the patient's present illness. And we're going to go into detail in future slides about what you're looking for for HPI. So don't worry about that. We're going to come back to it. The ROS, or Review of Systems, is an inventory of the, of the body systems. And I'm going to go through slides going through the ROS with you as well. And then the past family and social history, or what we like to call the PFSH, is a review of the patient's medical history, their family history, and their social history. So let's dive into each one of these elements of history in more detail. All right, let's start with the chief complaint. The chief complaint is the easiest one, but it does have to be recorded for all levels of EM. And the medical record should clearly reflect the chief complaint. So that came directly, that quote right there, came directly out of the guidelines that I just showed you how to get to. And basically the chief complaint is just a statement saying why the patient's there. Abdominal, patient's here for abdominal pain, patient is here, um, Let's say for nausea, patient is here, uh, chest pain. So it's why the patient has presented to the hospital. All right, the next element is the history of present illness. It's basically the description of the problem the patient is having. Think about it like adjectives. You know, you're, you're describing, say, the abdominal pain. So say the patient's chief complaint is abdominal pain. And then... Um, the physician or provider may start asking them some questions. Where is the pain? That's location. The pain is in my abdomen. Or they might be more specific. The pain is in this quadrant of the abdomen. Um, then the patient might tell the provider that it's a throbbing pain or a dull pain or a sharp pain. Those are qualities. So that would be quality. Um, if the patient said, and then the provider might say, on a scale of 1 to 10, how severe would you rank your pain? The patient might say, well, it's a 7. Or the patient may say, my pain is so severe that I can't even walk or I can't lay down. That's severity. Um, and duration could be like, how long have you had this pain? Well, I've had the pain for two days. Uh, so duration is how long have they had it? Timing is, when did it start? And timing could be something like it started this morning, or it could be it started after after I ate my meal, or you know that I mean, that's kind of so timing could be intermittent, like I get this headache but it's off and on, or you know so those are timing. That's how you do timing. Context would be a descriptor of what else could be going on that could be related to this. And so say you're the abdominal patient, you might say, well, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease about a year ago. Okay, so that's context. So they have abdominal pain in the context that they also have a disease related to the abdomen, so they could be related. Modifying factors is kind of like, what have you done to make it better? What have you tried to do? To, has, has anything made it better? Has anything made it worse? And, you know, for instance, the patient might say, well, I took some Pepsi, but it didn't get better. Or I took um, an antacid and it got better for a while. Or, you know, or such and such makes it feel better or makes it worse. They could say, well, when I eat spicy foods, it gets a lot worse. So that's what a modifying factor is. And associated signs and symptoms are signs and symptoms that go hand in hand with that disease. Like if you come in with abdominal pain, you say, and I'm also having diarrhea or I'm having cramps. Those are associated signs and symptoms. All right, so let's move on to the next element, which is review of systems. Okay, so we've talked about chief complaint. We've talked about history present illness. So chief complaint is why we're there. History present illnesses describe what's going on and, you know, what are the adjectives that go along with this problem that you have. And the review of systems is, let's do an inventory, ask the patient questions about their other body systems or, you know, this system, which is the GI system, and 
possibly a bunch of their other systems just to figure out, you know, if they've got anything else going on that might be related or that might need to be addressed. So we're going to go through those systems really quick. All right, the first, is, the first system is constitutional, and this can be hard for newer coders, but constitutional is basically things like um, things that you can, like vital signs for, like do you have a fever? Um, have you had any weight loss? Are you fatigued? Do you have chills? Um, that's what constitutional is. And eyes, those are that's pretty self-explanatory. And you'll see a lot of providers when they're seeing a patient for abdominal pain, they may not ask about the eyes because it's not really relevant most of the time. But some of the, the questions you might see about eyes would be, are you having any visual changes, any blurriness, any eye discharge? Do you have any redness? Will you have any pain in your eyes or around your eyes? So those are some of the things you might questions you might see asked about the eyes. The next system reviewed would be the ears, nose, throat, and mouth. And you might see questions about hearing loss, nasal congestion, sore throat. Does the patient have any pain in their mouth, like tongue pain or tooth pain? Those things may come up. Cardiovascular system, that one's pretty self-explanatory too. The provider will ask questions like, um, are you having chest pain? Do you have a, a pulse that's racing or a heartbeat that's racing? Do you have any swelling in your limbs, your feet, your hands? And the next one is respiratory. So the provider might ask questions about coughing, difficulty breathing. Are you wheezing? Are you having difficulty um, breathing when you walk? Those kind of things. And then GI, we already talked about. You'll be asking questions like abdominal pain. You have abdominal pain. You have constipation. You have diarrhea. You have nausea, flatulence, all those things that are related to the GI tract. And then genitourinary. Genitourinary uh, could be male or female. I have a female in the picture here, but it could be male or female. So, for instance, it could be pelvic pain, dysuria, urinary incontinence, urinary frequency. Um, it could be prostate problems, testicle problems, any kind of genital problems for either sex. It, you know, it's a, a wide variety of symptoms could be discussed during genital urinary, depending on the sex of the patient. And musculoskeletal. For instance, that might be questions about, do you have muscle pain, joint pain, back pain, those kind of things. And then there's the integumentary system, which includes the skin and also breasts. And you might have questions like, are you itching? Do you have a rash? Have you had any changes in moles? Do you have any breast lumps or any changes in your breast? And a neurological review would be, for instance, do you have a headache? Do you have weakness? Is abnormal gait, which means you're having difficulty walking. Your walking is weird. Slurred speech, which you'll see me have in the middle of this uh, um, right now, <laughs> but I'm sure slurred speech will come up while I'm doing this presentation at some point. Nerve pain, fainting, seizures, that is all part of the neurological review. And psychiatric, are you having problems with depression, anxiety, any hallucinations, any, you know, uh, suicidal ideations, that kind of stuff will come up under the psychiatric review. Endocrine review, this is about things like uh, you'll be asking questions about things like diabetes and thyroid problems and um, those kind of things. So you, you would see the provider asking about, is your blood sugar elevated? For those that are diabetic, they test their blood sugar. Um, do you have excessive thirst, cold intolerance, heat intolerance? Those kind of questions. Hematological lymphatic. Um, for instance, do you bruise easily? Um, do you have any swelling under your arms or in your groin area um, where your lymph nodes are? Allergic immunological. So allergic immunological, excuse me, you'll see things like uh, them asking questions about allergies, food allergies, seasonal allergies, pet allergies. And immunological, I didn't cover that yet, but we might see some of that as we're going through the series. It's just about the patient's immune, immune system. Okay, so as I was going through the review assistance, I hope you guys weren't taking you know notes because there's no need to. <laughs> um, 
a lot of times when you're in an electronic medical record in the inpatient setting, the providers will either say what systems they're reviewing, like they might say um, cardiovascular system, no chest pain, no irregular heartbeat, no racing heart or whatever. You may see them document that way, or there may be... Um, the EMR may actually have a section where the providers can, you know, like a, uh, a template that the providers can use. And in that case, it will tell you what systems they're reviewing. So you don't have to guess. Now, as a coder, you do need to kind of learn what goes with what systems. But, um, you know, that will come with time. That will come with experience. But what I did want to do is I went out to the Internet and I just Googled it and I found a checklist that someone had put out there. Let me just go out there and pull that up for you. Okay, so here we are out on the review checklist that I told you about. This is just something I found on someone else's site. They had just put this was posted out there. I found it on a Google search, and I think it's a really nice little checklist. But this will show you. This isn't all the review, all the systems that you can review. This is just some of them. This must be the systems that these providers like to review, that is pertinent to what they're doing. But as you can see, you know, for each system, they they list what kind of questions that they're asking. You know, all right. So now that I showed you what a sample review checklist looks like, um, and put your mind at ease a little bit, that the more you do this, the more you will learn your review of systems and you'll learn where things go, what system is being reviewed. As we practice a little bit, you'll get the hang of it a little bit better. So let's move on to past family and or social history. And... Um, as we go to the next slide here, we're just going to go jump right into past medical history. So past medical history is basically what past illnesses, treatments, surgeries, hospitalizations, and injuries the patient might have had. Family history is a review of the events of the patient's family. Um, like it might say, it, there may be, it may say family history mother positive for breast cancer, you know, mother has a history of breast cancer, father had um, an MI at age 50, those kind of things. That's what you'll see for that. Um, and then review of hereditary diseases in the patient's family is very similar. Um, they might say things like a uh, patient has an aunt and, and a cousin that are, you know, positive for the breast cancer gene or whatever. All right. Social history includes things like the marital status, alcohol use, tobacco use, recreational drug use. Okay, so now that you've learned about the HPI, the rev I'm sorry, cut. Okay, so now that you've learned about the history of present illness, or HPI, the review of systems, or ROS, the past family under social history, or PFSH, now that you've learned about all of these elements of the history, what we're going to do is put it all together and show you how to level a history, okay? So the levels of history are problem-focused, expand and problem-focused, detailed, and comprehensive. So we're going to pop out here and I'm going to walk through how to level the history. The reason I like to go uh, to do this in good notes is because it gives me opportunity to be able to use a pencil and show you or my, my pen and show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to yeah, use the pencil. OK, it just makes it easier for me to illustrate my point. So to level the history, like I said, you have four history levels. You have problem focused, which means the history basically revolves around the patient's problem. You have expanded problem focus, which means the history basically revolves around the patient's problem and a little bit more. Detailed is, you know, you, you're going to go into a lot more detail and comprehensive is obviously way more detailed. So let me illustrate that for you over here. So the way this works for level in the history is you have to have three of three in the same at the same level. Um, and so let's let's work through that. So let's go with our example. Let me erase this real quick and give us some room to work. Just put it up here. I'm going to put three of three so we don't forget. All right, let's go through the history of present illness. So let's say that our provider, the history of pre present illness, as you remember, those are the descriptors, like where where's the problem? What's the location of the problem? How long have you had it? Those kind of things. 
So that's kind of your adjectives, remember? So let's say the provider got four HPI elements. So he got location, duration, uh, quality, like he's, the patient said, it's a sharp pain, duration two weeks, location abdomen, right? And quality sharp. And also, let's see, he also asked, did you try anything like Pepsi? Did it make it better or did it make it worse? That's called modifying factors, right? So we have four elements of HPI. So what we do is we come up here and we're going to plot that. So 1 to 3 is brief and 4 more is extended. So he had 4, so we have extended. So let me erase this mess here. Use our little highlighter and we have extended. Right? Now the review of systems. Let's say our provider asked about the patient's GI system, so he wanted to know about the problems the patient was having with their GI tract, like nausea, the pain in the abdomen, maybe some, do you have some diarrhea or constipation? Then he also say, ask about the constitutional system. Say he asked, are you having a fever with this? Have you had any weight loss? Sorry, for some reason I cannot write right now. All right, so see he has two. He has constitutional and he has GI. So we plot that up here. Let's use our little highlighter. And right here it says 2 to 9. So 2 to 9 would be an extended review of systems. So we plot that there. Now the last thing is the past payment under social history, or PFSH. And let's say our provider only asks about the patient's past medical history, right? So we're going to say he asks about um, past illnesses, right? So that's just one. So he didn't ask about social history. He didn't ask about family history. And that would give us a pertinent history. Sorry, I got the wrong one. So since he only asked about one, that's pertinent. Now remember what I said. It has to be three of three. We have three in a row here. That makes this a detailed let me erase this. I don't know where that came. I'll make this a detailed history. Now, let's play with this a little bit more. So I can show you how the three of three works. Okay, let's stay with four HPI elements. So he's, let's change this. Yeah? And that. We're going to say the patient has four HPI elements, right? And let's say instead the provider is concerned about this patient because he thinks maybe the patient might have something more severe than just abdominal pain. Maybe there's something more serious going on. And say for whatever reason, it's medically necessary for the provider to do a full, complete ROS. So he says he does 10 systems, right? He goes through just about all the systems. He gets 10 systems then we're going to count that as a complete review of system. So now he has extended and complete uh, HPI, complete ROS, and let's say the provider still only asks one question, right? He asks about the patient's past history. He doesn't ask about family history or social history. He just asks that about past history, and he only gets one PFSH for that. Now look where we are. <laughs> okay, so do we have three going across anywhere? No, we don't. But what we do is we can take it down to the next line. So we have the highest line is this one. But you have to go to the lowest common, the lowest line, which would be this one, right? Because he has a 4 and a 1, so that would make it detailed still. Even if he had this complete ROS, he would still be at detailed because he doesn't have enough past family and or social history. <clears throat> and I will tell you, this example comes up a lot for providers for me. I have a lot of providers who will do, they'll do an extended HPI and they'll do a complete ROS and then they might get two um, here in the past family or social history. Here's what I see a lot. I'll see this. I'll see they get past 
medical, and then they get social history, but they forget to get family history. And then they only have two. Well, if you only have two, you still, you have to have at least three to be at this level. So you have to bump it down to that if you only have two. So one to two equals this pertinent. So this is a common thing I see when I'm auditing providers where they'll do a fantastic job in the HPI, in the ROS, but then they'll only get one or two PFSH, which downgrades them on every single time to a detailed history. So let me, let's look at this one more time because this can be very confusing. Because this is a, let's do this again, <laughs> clean it up, sorry. Because this is a three of three situation for the hit leveling history, you must have them all three at the same level. So you would have to have extended, so you have to have four HPIs, at least 10 ROS, and all three PFSHs to be a comprehensive history. If you are not, if you are, say, extended here and, and complete here, but then up here you're just problem pertinent, it takes you all the way down to the lowest level. So that's something to keep in mind for providers who might be watching this video. Um, but coders as well, it's a three of three. So if you're not all three lined up, you have to go to the lowest level documented. Don't worry, we'll be addressing this again. It's not the last time you're going to hear me talking about this. So don't worry if you're if you're like, you know, going, oh, crap, brain brain overload here. We will discuss this again. And that completes our discussion on the history and the basic overview of coding for inpatient services. So next time we come together, which will be about a week from now, I will do a video where we go into the examination portion. I want to thank you for your attention and thank you for those of you that have been out to my Etsy shop and are, are supporting me out there by buying the uh, outpatient laminated uh, coding tools that I have out there as well as some of the other things. I wanted to go ahead and announce that we have a new mug out and this is uh, the coding with my Nomi's mug for uh, March for St. Patrick's Day and I just think he's adorable and um, you can get 15% off of your purchase by using the promo code NOMIES, G-N-O-M-I-E-S, all caps. And if you use the little scan, um, the QR code scan on the screen here, it'll take you straight to my Etsy shop. But I will put the information on how to get to my Etsy shop in the description box under the video. But uh, I just thank you guys so much for your for all of the support and love and attention that you give. And I hope that I'm being of help to you. And I can't wait to see you again at the next video, which should be next week. Thanks. Bye.